Well, good morning, New Life Community Church. Uh, welcome to today's service, the last um, Sunday service of April 2020. Uh, we're looking at the theme of Seek First, Matthew 6 and verse 33. And we're going to go into a couple of different areas. Um, we're going to be looking at the steps of a righteous man or woman ordained by God. We're going to go on a bit of a journey and talk to you a little bit of a journey. And um, <clears throat> as we go through this, we're a little bit outdoors, the sun is shining and uh, the perspective of the view around us is quite interesting and um, so we're just going to go along a journey uh, for a few minutes this morning through worship in adoration to the king let's worship god Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
just out here uh, walking today and um, enjoying the weather just walking on this path and enjoying the scenery uh, quite a bit and the trees and various things and the lake as well uh, there's a lake and stuff to my uh, to my right or well, to my left right now and um, as you can see it's quite a, um, a sh cloudy day but quite a, a nice chilled not too cold not too wet quite dry 
And um, Proverbs 3, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Um, and I say it myself, and many of us have said it, it's a new day, it's a new dawn, uh, it's a new sunrise, it's a new page, it's a new chapter, it's a new book, it's new opportunities. Um, but I really wonder at times if we make it about us, if we make it about ourselves, about our own ambitions, about our own wants and our own desires, our own dreams, our own visions, instead of really trusting God with our life, with our relationships, with our finances, with our ministries, our churches, our businesses and all manner of other things at times. And I don't know if you've realised, but at times what can happen is you can be walking on a path and then all of a sudden you end up coming off and going into a detour, which can be a thicket, which can be a lot of variation of different things. You can end up coming out into the thickness of bushes, you can come into the thickness of trees, uh, you can come into an area where there's a lack of direction. You can come into marshland and swampland, which is a place which is full of water like this. It can be a place full of mud. It can feel a lack of direction. It can feel lonely. Sometimes you can feel isolated. Sometimes you can feel that you're not sure actually where you're coming to. You can get caught in the thicket of the bush. Sometimes you can get caught up in the situation, get caught up in the circumstance. We can get caught up in feelings, we can get caught up in emotions. And um, sometimes we can just struggle sometimes to actually find our way forward. And we end up getting caught up and walking through doubts, fears, phobias, anxiety, stress, strain. Get ourselves into debt, get ourselves into the wrong place at the wrong time. End up finding ourselves at a loose end or at a dead end. End up finding ourselves in a cul-de-sac. End up finding ourselves in a place that... We don't know where we are, we don't feel that we recognise ourselves, we don't feel that we are able to pursue the destiny and the assignments and the dreams and desires that God's given to us. Well, there's also another scripture in Psalm 37 and verse 23, and it says that um, the steps of a righteous man or woman are designed and ordained by God and, um, and so at times you can be walking in the thicket of things you can be stuck in the branches you can be stuck in a season of negativity you can be stuck in a season of unfruitfulness you can be stuck in a barren place but the Bible says the steps and the stops are ordered of God and so at times what you can find is that when we trust God and we rely on God we can find our way back to the source we can find our way back to life and we can work our way through we can cross over the negativity, we can cross over the water, and we can cross through the thicket of situations and come back to the path that God has called us to. And we can find that the things of this world begin to grow strangely dim as we allow the negativity of the past and the lack of direction, the lack of fruitfulness, the lack of success, the lack of relationship, the lack of intimacy, the lack of knowing God, because once we realise and we trust God wholeheartedly and we leave our selfishness, we leave our own wants and desires, then what we do is we come back onto the path that God has called us to. And as it says in Psalm 37 and verse 23, the steps, and I believe the stops of a righteous man and woman are ordered by God. Proverbs 3, 6 says, Trust and trust in the Lord. With all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 37, 23 says, The steps, and I believe the stops of a righteous man and woman, are ordained by God. So if we trust God, and we rely on and we cling to, and we stay steadfast, he'll bring us into that open place of favour, he'll bring us into that open place of faithfulness it'll bring us into that place of dynamics and dimension where we can grow so in life there is the whole outline of the detours getting back onto the path back onto track into a land that is an open space an open plane an open place for um, favor for us to expand for us to enlarge our territory for us to get a new perspective 
for us to get a better perspective, for us to get a better understanding of our journey as we go forward and as we unfold. And as you can see, uh, even the way I've done the camera on this aspect has been different. We are um, kind of seeing that there is a perspective that we can change the way that we view life and we view things around us. And in this season that we're in of coronavirus, in this season that we're in of what is it like in the unprecedented, what is it like in the unknown, what is it like in the unfamiliar, in the season that we're in, sometimes how we view what is around us is a vital part of that and is a vital part of how we go on this journey and how we determine on this journey that we're on, what our perspective is, and also where we're gonna find ourselves as we go forward. And we can come along, we can walk along that journey. And in many ways, what we've gotta do is, is change the way we look, change the way we see the things around us. Um, if you noticed um, earlier on as it was a bit colder, um, I actually had uh, my jacket on and um, I had um, a kind of thickish jumper underneath as well because that was earlier in the morning it was quite cold and quite chilly as I was out walking. Yeah the sun was rising but it was quite cold and chilly. Right now the sun is out and it's nice and lovely and warm and you'll see in a few minutes that my clothes that I've been wearing has changed and um, sometimes the way we view things changes that our demeanour um, the actual way that we present ourselves changes many times based upon circumstances and situations that we find ourselves in and at the moment we can see here there are hills around us um, and there are some quite interesting rocks around us as well and our perspective can soon change as soon as we come up against something and we come out of the plains of the field or the flatness of the land or the valley that we're in and we begin to go uphill and we begin to see these rocks that are in the way of our lives. Now you see, now you see the first part um, today as we talk about seeking first it was the aspect of um, seeking the right path, seeking the right um, journey. Um, it was about seeking um, the right perspective. Uh, it was about realizing that God, um, in many ways, even though we can go on detours and we feel lonely, we feel anxious, we feel upset, we feel isolated, insecure, that actually as we come into the wider open space, there can be favor. And we are ambassadors of the kingdom. Now, to be an ambassador of the kingdom, that means that what you do is you go to another nation, you go to another foreign land that was not the place of your birth, and you go there to represent the nation of your birth. And so we are ambassadors in a very foreign nation. The Bible says that we are foreigners, that we are passing through in this land. And, you know, it's interesting um, because we need to realize on this journey of seeking first God's kingdom that the way that we see things and our perspective in many ways needs to change and has to change. In the season that we're in, we heard so wonderfully well on Wednesday night um, from Pastor Rick uh, Von Wagner from uh, Florida about that God is pouring out a new wine skin and that God is pouring out new wine that as we go forward out of this season that God wants to change us and transform us and transform the church. He wants to change our perspective, he wants to change the way we view ourselves, the way we view church, the way we view God and he wants us to view it with an eternal perspective and uh, James Cowan recently spoke to us wonderfully well as well on priorities and not being distracted and many times on our walk with God we can become quite distracted even on a walk sometimes if you're out in the hills or you're running anybody that's into biking or running it can sometimes be quite easy to become distracted especially if you've got a few sandwiches and a banana and a drink once you've stopped cycling and walking let me tell you and you've sat yourself down it's it's easy to become distracted by a mobile phone, by WhatsApp, by Facebook, by a phone call, or even by the view that we see around us. 
or even the fact of not wanting to get back on the bike uh, or back on the walk to walk back from where we started from especially if it's a 10 or 12 mile ride back and so sometimes there can be distractions and the distractions can really hold us up on our journey there's some scriptures I want to kind of just challenge us on and speak to us a little bit as we kind of close off this morning on seeking first God's kingdom um, and the first one is to lift up our eyes lift up your eyes you see the Bible says lift up your eyes where does the strength come from and many of us at times what we're doing is we are under the circumstance instead of up over the circumstance and much rather be encouraged than discouraged are you listening to me church this morning I'd much rather be encouraged than discouraged and that is Psalm 121 and verse 1 it says lift up your eyes and I want to encourage this new life community church this morning that we lift up our eyes where does our strength come from our strength comes from the Lord I want to encourage you as well this morning to fix your eyes we're talking about seeking first and when you're seeking for something you've got to fix your eyes on it uh, I tend to at times kind of leave my um, car keys lying around and what can happen is Gabe's or Noah can grab them or sometimes Lydia Lydia's a bit of a, a cleaner and uh, Nadine especially as well and what they'll do is they'll pick them up and they'll move them and they'll tell me they've put them in a secure place and in a place that was a lot better than it was where they were lying around and they've cleaned it up and so what I've had to do is I've had to fix my eyes to try and find where the key is and God is encouraging us in this season right now church to fix our eyes on him Many times we've had our eyes fixed on the doctor, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, the teacher, sometimes on our own uh, intelligence, our own gifts, our own talents. But God is asking us today to fix our eyes on him. That is Psalm 12 and verse 2. On this journey that we're on as well, he is asking us to turn our eyes you see, in order for us to see the perspective of the view around us right here, um, I've got to turn my eyes to view and see what it is that I'm looking at. I've got to turn my eyes. And in many ways, what happens is, as I turn my eyes, I can choose to look at these um, rocks and this mountainside, I can choose to look at it in a negative perspective or I can choose to look at it as a great opportunity of God. You see, adversity will thrust us or should thrust us into our destiny. Adversity should thrust us into our destiny. You see, we have a choice of how we look at these rocks around us. Do we see them as a Goliath? which becomes a negative in our lives, or do we see them as a Goliath and we say, actually, these rocks are that big, we can't miss them. The situations and circumstances we find ourselves in are that big that we cannot miss the opportunity that God has given to us. So we've got to turn our eyes, not to the circumstance or the situation, but we've got to turn our eyes to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That is Psalm 119 and verse 37. Psalm 119 and verse 8 says, open your eyes. Let me tell you, there's nothing worse than walking blindfolded or walking around with your eyes closed. In the season that we're in, we talk about 2020 vision uh, in the year 2020. Talk about a new perspective, a new understanding. Talking about new priorities. And a way to seek for something is to open your eyes. You see, the worst thing for me to do is when I'm trying to find my car keys that my wife or my daughter or somebody has moved is for me to walk around with my eyes closed. Now, Nadine will say to me when she has moved them and she knows where they are and I can't see them, she'll say, well, what are you doing? You're walking around with your eyes closed. And actually, that is not the case. But you see, here's the thing. When we don't know in our own intellect when we feel uncomfortable because we're out of control in the flesh, when we don't feel we've got our hands on it, when we feel that we're in the unknown, we feel that we are walking around with our eyes closed. And actually, in the flesh, in the natural we are. But in God, we've got to have our eyes open. So Psalm 119 and verse 18 says, open your eyes. New Life Community Church, it is a season to open our eyes, to get a clear vision, clear perspective, clear understanding. 
Remember, we're in the thicket earlier, we're in the worry, we're in the stress, we're in the strain, we're in the quagmire, we went through all the forest. There's a saying, you can't see the wood for the trees. And sometimes in situations and circumstances, we can't see the woods for the trees. It says to guard your eyes. It says to guard your eyes in Psalm 101 and verse 3. What does it mean to guard our eyes? It means to focus in, to get a new perspective, to get a better understanding, to get a better viewpoint and a better vantage point to get a better advantage over the enemy. You see a horse, um, when a horse is first being trained, and even when it is trained, what they'll do is they'll put blinkers on the horse. They guard the eyes of the horse. Uh, a, guard dog, a guide dog sometimes for the blind, what they'll do is they'll put guarders over their eyes to guide them so they know specifically what avenue and what areas to walk in. And I believe in this season God is saying to us at New Life Community Church that we need some blinkers in some areas. There are some things that some of us have been looking at, even as a church maybe, our prerogative, our goals, our values, our worth, our vision in many ways sometimes, the way we view people, the way we even view church. Maybe we're parachurch, maybe we feel like we're our own little group that meets together or wants to do our own little thing and we hear from God and nobody else does and we've got the direction and nobody else does and we can lead better and we have a better understanding when the Bible says that one can put a thousand to fly and two can put two thousand or thousands to fly and so we need to realize that two is better than one a three strand cord is not easily broken the Bible says gather together as often as you can in remembrance of me and gather together wherever two or more are gathered there I am in the midst and God is not into just big gatherings he's into small groups as well as he's into ones and twos but we're way more better together church than we are apart and so in ways we've got to guard our mind we've got to guard our eyes we've got to guard our perspective we've got to guard our gifts and our egos we've got to gift got to guard the areas that we feel that many times the enemy can come in at because unless we guard an area we cannot maybe be focused and we can be losing focus. Now here's the thing, where you look, you will go. Where Denver Thompson looks, he will go. Now if I aren't looking and I aren't perceiving and I aren't keeping my eyes on Christ, then how many of you know that I could fall into a ditch? I could fall into a, a dark hole. I could fall into a precarious situation. And so where you look, you will go. It's time for us to prioritize. Denver Thompson has had to prioritize God first, family second, church, ministry, activities third. And I'm being honest with you in that. That's just a journey. We should all, in our perspective in this season, have God, Jesus Christ, as first in all of our lives. And then we have the whole thing of what you behold, you will become. What Denver Thompson beholds, he'll become. In other words, what I hold in adoration, what I hold in perspective of my heart, what I allow to sit on the throne of my heart, I will become. And so as we saw right at the beginning, in the thickets of life and in the driggery of life and walking on the path and it looks nice and it's shiny, all of a sudden we take a detour, we end up in a cul-de-sac, we end up in a negative avenue, a negative vibe, we end up in a wrong circumstance with the wrong people around us, we, we're guided by the flesh instead of by the spirit and we go through worries, fears, anxieties, phobias, we're isolated, we feel lonely, we feel stressed and all of a sudden God leads us out into that place of openness that place of favour, that place where God wants to minister and speak to us. And so what we behold, we will become. So I hope that's left you with quite a, a good bit of a thought today um, and seeking first God's kingdom. Quite a few scriptures. Lord, we just thank you today, Lord, for your wonderful creation. Lord, I thank you for every member of New Life Community Church. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Kevin Kershaw, who is at home now and building up strength, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for Julie, Lord, Denise's sister, you're ministering and working there. We thank you, Lord, for Hannah, Lord, that you're moving on her life as she's, Lord, conceiving, that baby's been conceived and growing in her body and the illness and sickness bring your hope and your comfort to her, Lord. We, well, we thank you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, we stand in the gap for Doreen, Lord, who is feeling confused and, Lord, is, is, um, Lord, kneeling, needing your touch, Lord, of love and peace and calm. Lord, we, we pray, Lord, for Jill Dewhurst right now, Lord, that you would minister to her, Lord, as she's got these shingles, Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet right now, minister by your spirit. We pray, Lord, for David, Lord, Lord Pat's um, son, Lord, that you would do a, a deep work there, Lord, not only, Lord, on this cancerous skin cells and these areas, Lord, but, Lord, you would do a deep work in his marriage, deep work in the finances, and deep work in his heart, Lord. You're bringing the prodigals back home. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would move 
by your spirit as well, Lord, for, for Janet Willis, his family, Lord, her sister, Lord, and, and uh, brother-in-law, but you're moved by your spirit, Lord. You would intervene there, Lord, as they've got the uh, COVID-19 and other areas of issues as well, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, as well, Lord, that you would move by your spirit, Lord, for uh, Andrea's uh, mother-in-law, uh, Doug's wife, Lord, that you would move by your spirit, bring comfort, bring peace, Lord, right there now. Lord, intervene, Lord, make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for every member of New Life Community Church, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us together for such a time as this. Lord, it is a unique time, unique opportunity. And Lord, we thank you that your word says, Lord, that you lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit into all truth. And I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, you would allow us today, Lord, to walk in those steps of righteousness, Lord, that we'll be men and women of destiny, dreams and visions would unfold in our lives. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence today, Lord. We, Lord, move amongst us this week lord give us a great opportunity to meet again in the name of jesus and everybody said amen listen i love you i believe in you i am missing you want to give you all a wonderful hug I'm looking forward to having that worship time together i'm going to cook you all a wonderful meal and we'll have some great time of fellowship just feel today that i'm standing with you believing with you uh, if you need to email me uh, email me my personal email is denverthompson83 at gmail.com if you need to talk to me on the phone or contact me send me a text message my number is 07 880 I love you church i'm standing with you believing with you praying with you and most of all most of all seeking first god's kingdom in this season be blessed love you and believe in you in the name of jesus